Welcome back everybody, we've made it to the finale of season 4 of Only Murders in the Building and we've solved the case of who killed Saz, but we ended this season with another murder. Now this next part is from my latest breakdown of episode 10 where we learned of Rex's reasonings and we witnessed the wedding between Oliver and Loretta, but unfortunately, one person's happy ending comes with the unexpected death of everyone's favorite doorman, Lester. Now before I share this clip in which I make my early predictions of season 5, I want to thank you all for clicking on this video. Make sure you all hit the like button, share your thoughts about my theory, but also share your theories in the comments below, and consider sticking around by subscribing to the channel. Hope you all enjoy this breakdown. As they meet Sophia, who's played by the great actress Taya Saloni, who shout out to Bad Boys 1, where I first saw her in the movie, as she tells them, I hope it's okay. I was upstairs looking for you. There was no doorman on duty. I took a shot. So with her now saying that, we now know that Lester died sometime after the wedding. Now in the conversation, she wants to hire them to search for her husband, Nikki, who is led to believe to be possibly dead. Now Charles and Mabel don't seem to be interested in helping her out in this investigation of this missing person because it has nothing to do with the murders in the building as she tells them. What happened to Nikki has everything to do with this building. Put a pin in this conversation for a little bit later, but meanwhile, we move over to Oliver and Loretta who say their goodbyes, as the plan is for him to join her in New Zealand in a couple weeks. As Charles and Mabel put the final touches on the season's podcast and happy to make it out of the wedding without a dead body, as the trio walk towards the good luck fountain and they find Lester dead. Now let's get into some unanswered questions and talk about who killed Lester. Now I'm assuming this had nothing to do with the main plot but might have something to do with season 5 but you all remember Detective Williams taking the gun that was found in the paradise? Did that not have any payoff or was that not important to the story at all? I was convinced that someone was in Saz's apartment in episode 1 but I guess that that was nothing important? But the biggest unanswered question that the show and the trio didn't even bring up since episode 7 of this season, who's been watching them this whole time since season 1? Now I'm more than confident that that reveal will be a part of the Lester situation come season 5. Which speaking of, let's talk about who could have killed the nice and kind doorman, Lester. But first, what do we know about our victim? First off, we know that Lester was a theater kid. Back in season two, you all will remember that we learned that Lester graduated from Juilliard and began doing off-Broadway work, but stopped getting roles and started drinking, which led to a period of him being homeless before he took his first actual job, which he became the doorman. But the question is, during Lester's time on the street, who knows what he did to survive and who he met? Maybe he came across some dark people that might have been involved in some mob situations. It's also important to remember that he had a wife and two kids, and I would assume that Lorraine, May, and Frank will make an appearance in Season 5. Talking about some more information about Lester, let's go back to Season 1. If you guys remember, the trio was supposed to release their finale of their podcast, and they were going to reveal that it was Theo and Teddy as Tim's killers, but Lester listened to the podcast as he delivered someone's dry cleaning. I want you all to remember the importance of the dry cleaning. Fast forward to this season during the photo shoot where Lester brought a rack of clothes to Charles' apartment for the trio to wear for the promotion of the Only Murders in the Building movie. Again, dry cleaning and remembering that our missing person's Nick he was the owner of a dry cleaning company. Now our mysterious dame Sophia mentioned that she couldn't find the doorman when she arrived. Now if what she said is believed to be true, we saw him at the wedding and found him dead the next day, meaning that he died after the wedding and shortly after nightfall. Now I think it's safe to say that we can put Sophia on our murder board for next season, as she told Charles and Mabel about her husband's disappearance and possible murder having everything to do with this building. As I've mentioned, the connection on Lester and the dry cleaning and Nikki owning a dry cleaning company, there seems to be a connection between the two. Now going back to Lester telling Charles about how he thinks that the fountain is good luck and for him to die at that same fountain doesn't seem to be a coincidence to me. Now if we go back to that conversation that Lester was having with Charles, he said to him that the fountain was their witness, their only witness, meaning that no one was in attendance of their wedding. So here's my wild theory about Lester. What if we have a situation where he married his wife Lorraine and maybe someone didn't approve of this relationship? Again, we remember that he was homeless. He didn't have a job for a while. So maybe she was a part of some big family or maybe a mob family. And again, they didn't approve of this relationship. And whoever this person is, maybe it was her father, or brother, or ex-boyfriend. So after years later, after seeking revenge, it could be some possible connection that again, 
if there's the mob involved because the news did say that there was some possible mob connections and this Nikki guy or maybe Lester was killed by a hitman who was responsible for the disappearance of Nikki. Look, it's just a theory. Obviously, we don't know any of the ties as the season five comes around. But like I said, I feel pretty confident that the fountain is key and the dry cleaning ties will definitely have important consequences in season five. Which speaking of, I don't want to leave out the fact that whoever's been following the trio since the beginning wasn't solved and that may have ties into Lester and Nikki in the building as well. Matter of fact, I actually have the response from the curator who was interviewed by TV Line to answer the missing piece of the puzzle. As you all can see on the screen now, TV Line interviewed the creator of the show to talk about the connections of season one. As you all can see, the creator said that that was a good question and that Helga did bring up that something was wrong at the end of episode eight as far as things being weird in the building. As he continues to say that there are always loose ends to a mystery story and leaning into those loose ends and holding them now and then and playing a card when you want to play it feels right to me for the ongoing mystery like this. As he continues to say that we will get some resolution and find out who's been following the trio since season one. Now another question an interview asked the creator was to talk more a little bit about Lester. As the interviewer called him sweet and innocent, but he says that there is a chance that the death is somehow tied into the dry cleaning king's case. As the creator says, there are a lot of areas that we've been talking about and looking at the life of someone who was a doorman in the pre-war apartment building in New York City at the moment and all of that encompasses. Who is the person and what stuff might they have been doing in their life? So yeah, it sounds like my theory about Lester's past will play into season five. And again, I think there might be some mob ties. Oh, and by the way, are we all in agreement that season five should be the last season of this show? Don't get me wrong, I love the trio, but I think the well of ideas are starting to get dry. So let me know in the comments now, will season five of Only Murders in the Building be the last season of this series? Now that's just a tease of the final moments of my larger breakdown, which you all can watch by clicking the video on the screen now. Thank you all for watching. You all are awesome. Stay safe and I'll see you soon.